the third book. So the third book is sort of back to stuff that we know and have known for a long time um, in a really interesting way. So um, this is a collaboration between um, at least two of these folks you'll know, James Lewis and Ian Cartwright, um, yeah. you and Rob Horn's the third guy who is newer to Fort Worth, so you probably haven't come across it. And they're working on uh, patterns of legacy displacement. How do we displace legacy systems in a more mm -hmm. sane way? And of course, a lot of this is about fighting against the, oh, well, let's spend five years building a replacement system and then we'll switch it over because we know yeah. how well that works. <laughs> um, and but the thing is, we haven't in all of the years. I mean, I've been in software business for 30 years or so during that whole time, replacing legacy systems has been a major part of our work. Mm -hmm. And yet there's not been very much written about it and not much yeah. understanding of how do we think about legacy replacements yeah. in an effective yeah. way. And so what we're trying to do with this book project is capture that information again in the form of patterns. Yeah. Um, so and, you know, because these folks have done a lot of uh, legacy replacement, of course, because mm -hmm. that's so, such a large part and parcel of our work. And they're trying to get that information down and in place. And so I'm really keen about this project because I think it's going to help a great deal to our understanding of how we best go about this exercise, which is just not talked about enough mm -hmm. um, in our industry. And, and yet it's such a central part. And it's not as if it's going to stop. You know, as I start to say, we're building tomorrow's legacy systems today. Um, yeah. And if we can better understand how we displace them, then we can build better now, but we can also get through a better approach of understanding that. And of course, the key to this is gradual process. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't re displace a legacy system all in one go. You do yeah. it over time. It may involve creating transitional pieces of software that you know you're going to throw away yeah. Um, yeah. in a year or two's time, but it's going to ease the process of that legacy change because it's a constant um, process. And so it's this is early days. Um, they dropped their first bunch of patterns onto uh, the website um, a few mm -hmm. months ago. Um, at the moment, we've got a second batch kind of uh, um, that's sent out to our internal review list on, on for the, for the infamous Fort Worth software dev mailing list, which yeah. um, everything has to go through. Um, so again, probably by the time uh, this goes out, that second batch will be out there. And I'm really hoping this can turn into an important book as well, because I think they've, they've got the knowledge. Um, yeah, yeah. They've got the desire, I think, to get this information out. The challenge, of course, as for any Fortworks consultant, is finding the time to sit and write. But we're working yeah, on that. Yeah. I think this could be a really good book. Cool. And, and, and is, is that uh, so, so you said there's not much written. The, 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 the only one that I can think of in that, in that space is Michael Feather's book on working with legacy code. Uh, is, right. Is, that is this a different kind? Well, I guess this is a, diff a slightly different kind of book to that. Yeah, operates at a higher level because I think what we're talking about is when you've got a legacy system that again is running a whole enterprise. Yeah. How do you replace that? So yeah. we're talking about components which are themselves sizable systems. You know, a yeah. component of this. I mean, LMAX will be one component that you kind of yeah, say, yeah. "Oh yeah, that's LMAX. That's a blob," right? Yeah. Uh, how do you replace that blob with all of these lines that are connecting to it in a way that, you know, yeah. isn't going to drive people insane. Um, and so we're operating at that kind of level. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's, it's very much a complement. It's kind of more like the enterprise architecture um, complement to what's in, le in the, the legacy code system is how do you take a particular individual system and replace yeah. the bits of it? Um, so there's, a, and it's definitely going to be lots of overlap, I think, as they dig a bit deeper into doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I mean, I mean, coach, particularly, I mean, the first batch of patterns that the, the most, the key central pattern they put in was actually an anti-pattern effectively, which is that of the, um, the feature, um, replication, uh, what was the mm -hmm. term they used? I, uh, have to look at it again to remind my, what was the word, uh, feature parity. Right, mm -hmm. where we say, oh, if we're going to replace a legacy system, let's build a new system that has feature parity to the old system. And I see the smile on your face. <laughs> we know how that normally works out. Yeah. So <laughs> part of that pattern was to say, don't do this. Or at least yeah, yeah. feature parity can work, but yeah. only in a very limited set of contexts. And that was one of the things that we worked through in, in writing the pattern. 
I dislike, I'm very wary of saying something is always wrong. Yeah. But I am very conscious of saying, well, things are often used outside their context of applicability. Mm -hmm. Feature parity can work, mm -hmm. but it's such a narrow context that it does that <coughs> you've got to be aware of that and realize that you know, most of the situations we run into, it's not the right context. Yeah. Um, and so the, one of the first patterns they wanted to, was to say, this is where feature parity breaks down, where you have to use some other kind of approach instead. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I was, I, just, just as a, one of the things that was going through my head when you were describing that is many, many, many years ago, I worked on a, a system that was replacing, I think this is probably the third or fourth replacement of um, uh, legacy systems in a car manufacturer. And this was a, a car configuration system that described all of the different mm -hmm. bits that came together to, 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 to make up a car. And the, we were writing this in Java, and the core, the, the core model that we had to retain was fundamentally based on the 80 characters of a punched card. <laughs> and we could we, we we couldn't get away from it because all of everything relied on the relied on this massively complicated kind of um overblown customized version of some kind of weird lempels if algorithm that kind of if this bit and this bit is set it means this so if this bit and this bit is set it means this other thing entirely and it's just it's just this overloading of information and building and testing those sorts of things it, it get, gets complicated quickly but it's, it's certainly an inter interesting problem and 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 definitely definitely a place where there are lots of patterns to mine i'm sure yeah i mean one of it i mean i'm gonna again talk about one of the things that's currently under re in, in the review process is a pattern that's un called um, divert the flow um and this is a very interesting pattern the, the core heart of it is actually in another pattern there's a very situ common situation i've kind of implied it already where your business management relies upon some system that ag aggregates information from all over the enterprise and pulls together and it's a critical system um, mm -hmm. and we refer, refer to in the pattern terms we're calling it the critical aggregator mm -hmm. and this is important because the key map leadership and the organization they're making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that's based on this aggregation of, of data now having a critical aggregator is itself not necessarily a bad thing in fact it's usually a good thing because mm -hmm. you want something that pulls together critical information for order to make decisions. Yeah. The problem was, is that in most legacy systems, it's metastasized into this awful thing that will reach deep into core data structures <laughs> of operational systems. Yeah. And as a result, you can't touch anything because yeah. I don't change this data, these five tables over here, because I'm scared that it's going to break the critical aggregator. Because yeah. the critical aggregator, it's critical. It has to keep running. Yeah. So how do you deal with this? So one pattern that, 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 um, that uh, was being, they're writing up at the moment is called divert the flow. And divert the flow says, it's kind of counterintuitive in a way, but it says the first thing you should replace in a legacy system is often that critical aggregator. Mm -hmm. Rebuild the critical aggregator and give it better interfaces so that you yeah. can actually substitute the input points better. Yes. Um, the, the alternative is basically when you is replacing the the upstream systems but creating a legacy mimic that sort of looks mm -hmm. like the old system so the aggregator can still work because usually the problem with the legacy aggregator is you can't replace its connections because yep. they're just so deeply entwined in so you have to pretend the old systems are still there with your new ones yeah the problem with legacy mimic though is if you use a legacy mimic yeah it complicates the building of the new systems because you've got this more messy thing to deal with but yeah. it also means if you've got opportunities to provide new information that would be really handy for the critical aggregator you can't do it because you yeah. can't yeah. go through that legacy connection well if yeah. you replace the critical aggregator first a it gives you greater safety in replacing other parts of the system because you've got a much more sane um tie into the critical aggregator but also, if you're now using some information but you didn't have before, you've got the opportunity to feed it into the critical aggregator because you can update the critical aggregator to use that new information. And yeah. so even though it's counterintuitive, because you kind of feel, well, that's the critical aggregator, I don't replace this first. 
because it's scary. <laughs> yeah. Often replacing it first can be the best route to go. And so yeah. that's yeah. a pattern that, we, that uh, they're referring to as divert the flow. And the, 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 the divert the flow is a, is a metaphor of saying, but if you, if you want to replace um, a dam, the first thing you want to do is divert the flow of the river so that you can work on the dam without having it be affected by the uh, so, so, stuff so coming down from upstream. So, so once again, referring back to Eric Evans, you, you, you're going to you're going to use that and start to build anti-corruption layers to to allow right. you to assemble the new the new criti the critical aggregator. Yeah. Yep. Mate. So that's the kind of pattern work that they're doing. So that gives you a sense of the level that they're operating yeah, yeah. at and how it relates, I think, to the, the, the uh, to Michael Fevers's work. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm very keen on seeing how this kind of stuff develops because this is definitely stuff we've done many times with our yeah, yeah. clients over the years. Yeah. And often the challenge is getting people to understand the trade-offs involved because the trade-offs are um, often not straightforward because people do come into this in the sense of, oh, let's just go for feature parity and move it yeah. to the cloud. Yeah. Um, and we go, <laughs> no, that's probably not what you really want to do. Um, and and if, it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's really a legacy system, you probably don't know what all the features are anyway because all the people <laughs> the people have gone in the document. It's not their poorly documented. <laughs> well, exactly. And of course, often it's doing things that you don't want it to do. Indeed. Um, yeah. And so, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff around that. So I'm keen to see this one. And, and so, so there you see the three um, books I'm mentoring and the intellectual whiplash that I go yeah. through switching from one of those to the other. <laughs> I, 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 I said in your intro that you had a broad perspective. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy.